and that we will all understand that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. So we have a lot of good things going on here at the church. If I can get you all seated and get your attention. We call this meeting to order. <laughs> Announcements. This is GP120, your church news in about two minutes. Good morning and welcome to the gathering place. If you're a guest this morning, we are so glad you're here. We hope you enjoy the service and join us again soon. Did you know our church has a visitation ministry? If you or your family are hospitalized, ill, or just need someone to stop by, call the church office and let us know. A member of our visitation team will be given your information and will stop by soon. Hey parents, have you heard about our GLOW ministry? GLOW stands for God's Little Ones Worshiping. The kids meet together on Sundays during service and on Wednesdays during Bible study. You can sign your child up in the lobby before service begins. Hey church, we want to remind you that we have Sunday morning Bible study. Class starts at 9.30 and is led by Matt and Mickey Heckler. Get here early and get into the Word. Here at the GP, we have a ladies' prayer meeting that meets every Tuesday morning. And as of now, they're meeting on the third floor of the GP, and they're ready for some new prayer warriors to be on their team. The group meets every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Be there for prayer. Hey, did you hear Pastor John's message last week about keeping in touch with family? No, no. Did you hear? Yes, I did, and it was great. And if you haven't joined the GP text group yet, do it today. You'll receive special announcements and event reminders sent to your phone. And an occasional message from Pastor John. So get your phone out now and text GP to 59769 to stay connected with your GP family. <laughs> Don't forget, free worship connection takes place every week. There's coffee, juice, and donuts at 10 a.m. in the lobby. Arrive early for food and fellowship and get to know the GP family. <laughs> Quick reminders, a live meets tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Ladies prayer meeting is this Tuesday at 10 a.m. And Bible study is Wednesday at 7 p.m. That's it for GP 120. Have, Have a, a great, great week. week. Good morning. Ooh, it is on now. Good morning, everyone. Good to see everybody. Uh, I want you to join me in prayer. We're going to open this service. I know there's some special things going on this morning. Um, before we pray, can we just? I need it. You may not need it. We just need to. I just want to just have a moment of quiet, and then I'll start to pray. You know, as we come in this morning, it just. I don't know, just things were just a little bit uh, chaotic, a little chaos. And that means there's something special that's going to happen today. Because the enemy, he knows. And uh, there is something special for someone here or for all of us here this morning. So I'm expecting that this morning. So I just want us to quiet ourselves and think about your week. And we do not serve a God that's of confusion, and um, it's going to be a good day. So if you'll just quiet for a moment, and then we'll, we'll pray.
something special every day because you're in it. This is the day that you've made. Lord, we're rejoicing. Joy, that's our choice. You made it. We have to choose. Regardless of the things that may go on in our life, the things that seem chaos and seems out of order, Lord, we can still choose. This is the day that you made. It's a choice. And I know that, you know, our flesh pulls at us. There is a war raging between our flesh man and our spirit man. I want my spirit man to win out. I know that you're working in all of us. Your work's not completed. As your spirit reveals things in my soul that aren't right, thank you for bringing them to my mind. It is hard. It is painful sometimes. But just continue to work in me, and I'm sure everyone in here agrees. Continue to work it out. No matter how it feels. We're we don't like change. But you bring change. It's good change. You bring life. And a life that's worth living. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our pastor. Thank you for the message that he's going to bring. Lord, let us prepare our hearts and our minds, Lord, to receive. Thank you for those that are going to lead us this morning in our worship. I thank you for them. Thank you for their commitment. Thank you for those that set up on Sunday morning. Thank you for their commitment, Lord. And we know it's it's not about the stuff that you see. It's about you. But it is part of our experience, Lord. And it's part of all those coming in this morning that we can enjoy this service and this time with you. But it is about you. So we just thank you for this day. We ask your Holy Spirit just to lead and guide this service and everything that's done here this morning. And we trust that you will. I trust that the leadership will allow that to happen and the people in this church will allow that to happen. Because it is all about you and with your spirit is where the power comes from. So I just thank you for this day and everything that's going to happen. And let's just be a wonderful day. We love you, Jesus. Good morning, church. Uh, you might have noticed there's a few new faces in our congregation today. I'll ask that you make them welcome. Um, a couple months ago, Dad and I were having our Sunday lunch at Mom's house, and we were discussing what it would be like if God would bring someone into our church family that could implement like dancing and, and worship in that form, because worship comes in many different not just singing, it's with your daily life, your daily walk, your interactions with people, and in dancing. And it's a very powerful way to adore our King. Um, so Melissa Marting, I reached out to her and just said, will you pray about this? Because I felt like you came directly into my mind, if that would ever be something that you would want to do. And she said, oh my goodness, I have been wanting to implement this gift for such a while now, and so funny that you got a hold of me on this day because I've really been thinking about it. I actually talked to my mom about it. And uh, she's taught dance for 37 years. Most of you know her at Terry's Dance Spectrum. And she's brought this group of beautiful young ladies today to do a worship number, a ballet number. And uh, I want you guys to really focus and worship and uplift them so they feel that power. It's not just about dancing. It's about dancing for the king. So please give your attention to the girls. Waking or sleeping, thy presence to my life. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can be so far. How marvelous! How 
I'm so glad that that dance was in the house of the Lord today because God is the creator of music and dance and all things that are good and the devil has stolen it and corrupted it. That is all for the family of God to enjoy. And I'm so glad and I appreciate all the work that was put into that. All right, let's get ready to worship everybody. I Gang, I think I want to start with Set of Fire this morning, and then we'll go into that next one after that. I want to, I want to fire lit in my soul. Sometimes we have to use discipline to keep the fire of God burning. Hey, Beth. Stir it up. Paul told Timothy, he said, stir up the fire that's in you. When we laid our hands on you and prayed for you, stir that fire up. We have a beautiful, beautiful family here. The family of God. And we love each other. And we have issues with each other and we work it out because we are family and we're going to be together forever. And we're willing to work out the issues because you're worth it. The person next to you is worth it. So valuable. Let's try to be as undistracted as we can because King Jesus deserves it. He deserves all of our focus and attention right now from the top of the bleachers to these kids down here. Set a fire, Father.
guys I like the way you were worshiping today that's good sometimes it makes the parents nervous when they get up here worshiping but it's okay we don't want to take the dance out of them we gather around you and bless you you're a wonderful bunch Lord, I thank you for every one of these boys and girls in Jesus' name. Pray that there's a blood covering over their lives and that they're protected. Pray that they'll all be leaders, not followers, that they'll be blessed, not cursed. Any curses, Lord, that come against them, that can be passed down to them, Lord, we stand against that in Jesus' name. Through the blood of Calvary, you will break every chain in your life. Pray for the teachers that they're anointed and that right now, Lord, their, their hearts are opened up and we'll hear your voice. So, Lord, the angels of these kids are in your face all the time so you know what they're going through. And I'm going to pray for them right now that a hedge of protection is built around them. Satan cannot penetrate that hedge of the blood of Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
My prayer, Lord, that you open our understanding and let us see things in the Spirit. Let us understand that this relationship that we have with you is indeed a relationship. It's not that we're trying to please God all the time. It's that we're walking with God. And we're drawing from his resource. And Jesus made all that possible as he took all the sins of all time and they were buried with him. He defeated Satan. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave from him. He rose victorious. And because of that, God said that his name, Jesus, would be the name above all names. That at the name of Jesus, the demons would tremble. Help us to understand this thing may not be what we suppose it is. This thing is freedom and it's power and it's presence. It's not a list of do's and don'ts and it's not something maybe that we've painted a picture of it being. It's something that is a relationship. Lord, open our minds and let us see things for the way they really are. Thank you for everybody that's here this morning. And I pray that not one person leaves here without a new understanding and a touch from you. All of our brothers and sisters who are worshiping here and around the world, we lift them before you and we ask you to be with them. Lord, we're one big body of Christ. And we love them. And we thank you for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. will go ahead and get in their places and if we'll have the prayer requests I'll do the prayer requests and then we'll go right into our offering Thank you. Uh, I do want to make one announcement um, it'll be on our video announcement start next week but uh, the 30th of this month is our baptism Sunday at Walter's Farm and um, you may have seen it but make sure Give yourself some time to be a part of that. If you're thinking about baptism, there is a sign-up sheet in the lobby every week. Please sign up if you would like to uh, join that baptism. If not, just show up. We'll do it right then, right then and there. doesn't make any difference. So if it's on your heart, I encourage you to do that. And come and be part of it as a church family and be witness to these people that are being baptized and, and uh, being buried with Christ and risen to a new life and be part of that experience. It's awesome. It's a great time to bring your kids. It's just a great place. If you've not been there, I encourage you to be a part of that. The 30th, okay? You'll see more on that. Okay, let's let's pray for these names that are up here this morning. And I, I'm, I'm going to let you read them yourself, but let's just pray in the name of Jesus. We were just singing about that name that's above all names. Lord, I just thank you.
name of Jesus for all these things that you brought forth, Lord, and the names that we have on our own hearts that may not be listed up here, Lord. We just ask that you touch every life that's up here, meet every need, and I know that you will. And Lord, increase their faith for healing or whatever it is they're believing for, but Lord, increase it in us also. Increase our faith. I just thank you for them. Lord, touch every life and bless them in Jesus' name. And I thank you for all those that are here this morning as we give, Lord. Just bless us, Lord. Just completely bless us abundant, abundantly as we as we bring forth our tithe this morning. Lord, I just thank you for all those that are able to give this morning, Lord. And I just pray and I thank you and ask whenever we need to that we can come to you and ask for that wisdom and understanding, especially in our finances. Lord, direct us, Lord. Help us to do the right thing. Help us as leaders of this church, Lord, just to do the right things as we to build this church, Lord. Uh, he's blessing us in so many ways. And you've heard our testimonies and, and Matt spoke about them and Pastor John. You are blessing this church and you're blessing these people. And I'm so thankful to be a part of it. And just, it's a, it's a great morning. Thank you for what's going on and what's happening. Just thank you in Jesus' name. you're here for the first time, I want to encourage you to stop out at the table. Julia will have a gift for you. We're glad you're here. Family of God worshiping together. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience. Thank you, Jesus, for everyone that's here. We look in your word. We need your understanding. So help us, Lord, to understand and to know that your word is meant for each of us individually. It is a corporate worship that we're having right now, but your word speaks to each and every one of us as an individual. So let that happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus had just uh, given the keys of the kingdom to his disciples. That happened in... Uh, Matthew 16, verse 19, Jesus said, I'll give you the, kings of the, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. Prior to that, he had just told Peter that he was going to build his church. His church was going to be built on a rock. Jesus was a rock. Peter was a part of it just as all of us are. We're the church. And to the church, he says, that I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You can bind on earth that's bound in heaven, loose on earth that's loosed in heaven. Immediately following that, in verse 20, Matthew 16, 20, Jesus says, as he commanded his disciples that they tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, that he would be killed and raised again on the third day. Then Peter took him aside, began to rebuke him, and he said, far be it from you, Lord, that this shall ever happen to you. 
But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You're an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Jesus' disciples were still looking for a conquering Messiah of who they did believe Jesus was him, but that he would come in and they would wage war and they would be the rulers. He would lead Israel into the power of the whole world. If they would have gone out and started to preach this, it would have caused a rebellion. There would have been a rebellion and the Romans would have come down on the people and they would have been crushed. This wasn't at all what Jesus had come to do. And his disciples still had to learn what this whole thing was about. Jesus had come and he had faced the church of the day. There were the priests and the scribes and the Pharisees and he faced them and that was the Sanhedrin. That was set up actually by God. God set up the priesthood. But over the many hundreds of years it had turned into something else. It's just human nature for us to turn this whole thing into something that it's not. As I was praying a while ago, God was laying on my heart that this is a relationship. This is us and the creator of the heaven and universe having fellowship, discussion, communion, being together. In Jesus' day, these elders were very respected and powerful guys. So people were looking up to them. And it's okay to look up to people. It's okay to have order. And it's okay to be subject to the rules and the power, but it had become all about the system. And the system, everything was done to enforce and undergird and hold up the system. Jesus was come, had come into all of this and he was saying what he was saying and even his own disciples really didn't have the truth of the matter yet. And he said, I'm going to have to suffer. Jesus, the Son of God, the guy they're waiting for to free them and to take over and he tells them, I'm going to have to suffer and I'm going to be killed but I'm going to raise from the dead. I don't think they heard raise from the dead. All they heard was I'm going to suffer, I'm going to be killed. That didn't match their perception of what this thing was supposed to be. That did not match what they had been taught for hundreds of years about the coming Messiah. It just was not what they perceived. Here's the Messiah, and he's saying he's going to be killed. And if you look over in Luke chapter 17, verse 26, this whole kingdom thing wasn't at all what they thought it was going to be. Jesus had told them, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. You're going to bind on earth, it's bound in heaven, loose on earth, it's loose in heaven. And the way they heard that, it really matched what they had been taught. But Jesus said, as he was asked by the Pharisees in Luke 17, 20, he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come. When is this thing coming that we've been waiting for? When is this kingdom coming? going to be set up where we rule everything. And Jesus said, the kingdom of God does not come with your careful observation, nor will people say, here it is or there it is. It's not defined by here or there. He said, 
because the kingdom of God is within you. That's the relationship that I'm talking about. God's kingdom set up in you as an individual. Each and every one of us. And he said, you're going to bind on earth, it's bound in heaven. You're going to loose on earth, it's loosed in heaven. It's not what we have made it out to be. It's powerful, but it's in us. It's the presence of the power of God that's in us. What is your perception of your relationship with Jesus? He looked at Peter when Peter, actually that phrase that said he took him aside, he actually grabbed a hold of him. In the original language, it meant to aggressively grab a hold of somebody and pull them away. And he had pulled Jesus away, and he said, this is not going to happen to you. And Jesus, to me, said something that was like pretty out there. He says, get behind me, Satan, to Peter, the guy that was saying, no, I'm not going to let all this happen to you. And he calls him Satan. You see, Jesus had... been addressed by this very spirit before. He was addressed by that spirit, and the account of it is earlier in Matthew, in chapter 4. He'd come up out of the water from being baptized, and he was led by the spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil, Satan. He had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and the tempter then came to him in his weakened state and he said if you're the son of God tell these stones to become bread Jesus answered it's written man does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God then the devil took him to the holy city had him stand on the highest point of the temple if you're the son of God he said throw yourself down for it's written he'll command his angels concerning you They'll lift you up with their hands so that you'll not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered and said to him, It's also written, Do not put the Lord your God to test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he showed him all their splendor. All this, Satan said, I'm going to give to you if you'll just bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan. The same phrase that he used with Peter, away from me, Satan, be gone, for it's written, worship the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and serve him only. Then the devil left them, the angels came and attended to him. The things that Satan brings against us many times are so subtle that we don't recognize them as Jesus did. You see, he wasn't actually calling Peter Satan. He was calling the spirit that overcame Peter at that point Satan because that spirit was coming against him again through somebody that Jesus truly loved and that truly loved Jesus. The stones to bread are material things. In Jesus' temptation on the mountain, he was using, Satan was using the things that all of us deal with to this day material thing do you have things or do things have you get behind me Satan throw yourself off the tower he said sensationalism is your experience all wrapped up in you feeling good the presence of God as we worship together when it's heavy and powerful you do You feel that presence, and it's amazing, and it's wonderful. But when you walk out of here tomorrow and the next day, and you run up against something that doesn't feel good, where are you? When you run up against old temptations, there's no sensation anymore. You're faced with all the troubles of life. Where are we then? Are we still realizing that this is a relationship and the kingdom of God is in you and all the power you need is in you? He said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. I give you lots of stuff. 
You can have all these things you've ever dreamed of, and all you have to do is worship me. So we, we, we end up compromising. And when we compromise, it's like we set this time aside and we start to have this me time and we start to have this time that we're calling family time because it's really what we want to do. And suddenly, we find ourselves all wrapped up in a relationship with everything around us instead of the relationship that we're supposed to have with the creator of heaven and universe. And he said, seek me first, and I'm going to add everything else to you. So how did we get so misguided? Because when our first assignment is our relationship with the Lord, everything else falls in line. Bigger than you can ever imagine or think. No one would want to go to a cross. I'm sure Jesus at age 33 wasn't looking forward to being crucified. The price that was paid to take our sins is amazing. I'm a little older than 33. But I wouldn't want to be crucified. And yet Jesus, all God, all man, because he could feel everything that we feel. Knew he was going to have to die in agony. And the tempter was suggesting to him through Peter at that moment, no, you don't have to do this. Now, if, if Satan is so cunning that he takes somebody that Jesus loves and that loves him, and he brings him against him like he's protecting him, and he he sees through that. If that guy says, no, you don't have to do this, and Jesus' flesh is saying, I don't want to do this, but he's got us on his mind because he's going to pay our sin debt. What have we made this thing? We can't pay it. Jesus paid it. 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid the price that we could have the relationship and we don't get it. We've got, a, we've got a picture of this thing as something that it's not. It's not what we think. It's peace. It's love. It's happiness. It's contentment. It's seek me first and I'm going to give you all this stuff. Your desire is going to change. There's a whole lot of stuff right now that when you get it, it's just a whole bunch of trouble to keep it. My dad, and I've told you this before, told me a long time ago when I was a young man, probably a teenager, he said, John, I want you to know the easiest thing to do is get something. The hardest thing to do is to keep it. And he's right because it's happened to me many times. I'd work hard and get something I wanted, and it'd be a joy for a while. And then down the road, that thing would just be a bunch of trouble. All of you have experienced that with automobiles, I'm sure. Sometimes your houses. Satan, the word Satan literally means adversary. Satan is adverse to God's will in your life. He's trying to steal your dominion. If he can tempt you in any way, and he can get you just to compromise, he starts pulling the power from you. This kingdom that's built inside of you starts to weaken because it starts to get covered up. And we don't have our power anymore. And, and because of that, little things start to slip in. He's an adversary. He's adverse to this relationship between you and God. Peter spoke out of love, I do believe. But because he did not understand because this kingdom was not yet set up in him, he spoke what the devil was speaking through him. We can be deflected even by love. You see, it's not Satan's scheme to get you to go out and commit murder. Matter of fact, 
that probably is the farthest thing from his mind for you. He wants you to be deflected, just deflected, just not quite doing the right thing. He gains power by you being deflected. You see, real love is not necessarily easy, but it makes you great. God's love will make you great. It doesn't make life easy necessarily. It makes you have the ability to handle what's being thrown at you. Everybody's going to get stuff thrown at them. No one is exempt. But this presence of God in our life carries us through. Satan is banished from Peter when Jesus says, get behind me. Peter was walking out in front of Jesus when he said, this is not going to happen to you. Jesus knew what was going to happen because he knew he was going to be the sacrifice. And Peter was stepping out in front of Jesus, and he was wanting to take the lead. It's the way I think it should be, not the way you think, Jesus. This is not going to happen to you. I'm going to stand out here in front of you, and we're going to deflect this thing, and you're not going to be killed. You're not going to be tortured. You're not going to suffer. You're not going to be crucified. I'm going to step out here and make everything all right. He got himself ahead of Jesus. It's an easy thing to do. Things are thrown at us in our everyday life. And I want to tell you, my heart's desire is that when I talk to you, I talk to you about things that are coming against you and are going to happen down the road. This relationship is for our everyday living life. It is not something that we've made it. It's not something that we just pay attention to on Sunday. It's something that carries us through every day we live and breathe. It translates right into your everyday life. And into your everyday life, little things will sneak in. And, and, and we'll go ahead and we'll move on something impulsively. I'm an impulsive person. I move quick. My son Scott is twice as impulsive as I am. He's in real trouble. But I move sometimes too quick. And when I have moved too quick, I find out maybe God wasn't in this thing that I decided to do. Then I'm praying, Lord, bail me out. How many people have been there? Bail me out, Lord. I've really messed up. The wonderful thing is if I'm seeking him first, I don't have to be bailed out. But even when I do mess up, it's a hard issue. It's not a list of do's and don'ts. It's a hard issue. And I'm wanting to do the right thing. And maybe I don't get it right, but I really want to. So when I do mess up, Charlie, I just say, Lord, help me. And I, I turn around and I'm sorry I got ahead of you. I'm like Peter, I'm going to walk out ahead of you and change everything. My deal is to learn to be a Christ follower. I want to follow Jesus because he knows the way. He came down here and he walked this earth in the flesh. And in the flesh, he felt everything that I feel. He felt everything that you feel. Now he's at the right hand of the Father, and he's explaining to the Father and interceding for us so that the relationship between us and the Father is strong. <laughs> strong. And I can believe that he wants that for all of us. And when we mess up, and when we've gotten out ahead of God, we just say, Jesus, I should ask you first. I just should ask you. What, what was I thinking? How did I, how did I let my wants get ahead of your will? Peter had done this. But the wonderful thing is that even though Peter had made this remark and wanted to jump out ahead of Jesus. And Jesus had to get very stern with him and order that voice of Satan away from him. 
Peter was still a follower of Jesus. He went down to the very end and Jesus said, Peter, you don't have the power yet. You're going to deny me three times. Oh, no, not me. Peter denied him. But then Peter stood before the very people that he was scared to death of when he was denying Christ before his crucifixion. And he proclaimed the gospel. You've killed Jesus. You've killed the Messiah. Something had happened to him. He had gotten everything. He had perceived everything now the way it really was. It wasn't like he had always thought. He had to forget all of that, and he had to realize this is a relationship, and there is a power moving into me that's bigger than me. And in my weakness, the power in me is made strong. And Peter stands up before those very people that he was scared to death of to the point of denying Jesus, and he told them, you've crucified the Messiah. 3,000 of them were saved that day because Peter in boldness, had the presence and the power of God in him. He had started to walk in a relationship with the very presence of God. The kingdom that he had been looking for wasn't out here in something external. It it was inside of him. And that kingdom started to rule him. And he started to follow Christ. And he started to hear the voice of the Savior. And he started to know the right thing to do because now he was Christ-led. He was a follower, and he understood, and it wasn't like he always thought. And I learned some time ago that even though I was raised in church, it just wasn't like I perceived it to be. And they may have preached the right thing. I can't even remember, but I perceived that somehow I had to be good enough that I could have a relationship with the Father. I was, I was like a Muslim. I thought I had to please God in everything. I thought I just, everything I did was all about works. And somehow I had this angry God standing up here and he was going to judge me and he was going to throw down the hammer and I was done. And if I was going to make it, I had a whole, ro- a whole list of do's and don'ts and I better, I better watch it because if I mess one of those up, hammer There are things in our life we should not do. There are things that will cause you pain. When the Spirit of God and the kingdom is in you, you don't want those things anymore. It's amazing when you get the Spirit of the Lord in you, how you see things different and how how your desires change. You desire the right thing. And you're able to do the right thing because he enables you. Not because you're afraid God's going to throw a hammer down on you. He changes us. I had a a bad temper. Believe it or not, I I had a bad temper. I smile a lot anymore. I smile most of the time. it's, It's natural. I'm not putting it on. It's what I feel. And I think about hammers, and I think about all the hammers I threw through walls. I'd be working on something. <laughs> it didn't go right. I'd just throw my hammer through the wall. And then I have to fix the wall. Wasn't that smart? God loves us. He laid out this wonderful plan that the kingdom would not be here or there. It would be in us. And when that that kingdom starts to grow inside of us, everything changes. It's a wonderful experience. Peter, it isn't like you thought. It just isn't what you thought it was. It's way better. 
you stand with me? Jesus, I don't know how we draw our conclusions. I don't know what shapes us and forms us. I don't know why we perceive things one way or the other. But I know that this relationship we have with you is because your kingdom is built inside of us. And it's a heart issue. Lord, we pay so much attention to everything else that we don't give a lot of time to the truth of the kingdom within. We're so busy and so noisy that many times we don't hear your voice. And we pay the consequences for that. And you'd think we'd learn, but then we'll turn right around, do the same thing again. And I'm so glad that you look at our heart and not our actions. Because, Lord, we're going to mess up. We're like little children trying to learn to walk. We fall down and we mess up, but eventually we're going to get it. And we're going to understand what this relationship really is. And how it empowers and enables us to do what we need to do. How there's peace and there's joy and there's contentment that we never ever experience in any other way than when we're walking close to you. So Lord, I'm praying this morning that everybody in this place steps one step closer to you in this relationship that we have. I'm going to pray that we commit this morning to be more aware of the presence of God in our life. That we make up our mind that, hey, Satan may be speaking, but I'm going to order him behind me. I'm not going to be caught up in desire, not going to be caught up in the treachery. I'm not going to allow Satan to take my dominion. I'm going to walk close to you, Lord. I choose to do that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Is there anybody who wants to walk forward and proclaim, I'm going to do better. This morning, I'm going to make a move toward God. I'm going to take one more step closer. And I'm going to be powerful in the Spirit. And every day I'm going to be more aware of the presence that's in me. And every day I'm going to know that God's walking with me. He's talking with me. He's leading me and he's guiding me. And when things start to go bad, I'm not going to want to throw a hammer through the wall. I'm not going to want to throw a hammer through the wall. I'm going to realize that the presence of the Lord is going to carry me. That I'll have a new perception. People around me are going to notice a difference. Because there's so many things that I, I can't do within my own power. I can't change people. I, I, there's many things, Val, I just can't do. I have to have the presence of the Lord in my life. Giving me the power that I need. And I seek him first. And then all these things that I've been 
butting my head against the wall about are going to line up because I'm seeking him first. Father, I thank you for everybody that's standing here. In Jesus' name, I love them. And I know you love them. And I know it is your desire that we are in a condition that we're praying about. It's your desire that we move one step closer. It's your desire, Lord Jesus, that we hear your voice. And your voice is always right, the truth. We know the truth. We know the truth. Why? Because you give us the truth. And we can hear you. And we can be strong. And we can be the example that we need to be to the other people that are around us, to our families, to our children, to our grandchildren, to our brothers and sisters, to our parents. We can be what you want us to be, that your presence enters every situation. And all the things that we've goofed up about, Lord, they're in the past, they're gone, and Satan cannot bring those up against us. And when he tries to do it, just like Jesus told Peter, get behind me, Satan. In the name of Jesus, the past is past. We're moving forward. We're not going to allow the past to rule our present. And for God's sake, the past can't rule our future. It's a new day. Today's a new day. Tomorrow's a new day. And we walk this thing out one day at a time with God. We're walking with God, the creator of the heaven and universe, and we are powerful, Tony. We don't have to put up with this stuff. Lead us and guide us, Lord. Lead us and guide us. Speak to us, and we'll move forward. I love everybody that's here. We love you. God loves you. It's a heart issue. God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outside. When we got God in us, we have his presence in us, it will spill out. Give me Jesus. Let me tell you something about the adversary. We stand here. We feel the presence of God. He's with us. Doesn't make any difference what Satan tries. God's still with us. We can walk out of here. We can run into things. God's still with us. Satan can throw all hell against you. God's still with you. And we just have to know that. We have to perceive that. It doesn't make any difference. It's like you're in an armored car and he's shooting little 22 rounds at you. He can't get in there. He's going to keep shooting. Life's going to keep coming at you. But I've told you this before. We literally have an unfair advantage over life. We have the very creator of life that guides us, leads us, and will show us what to do. The people that don't have the Lord have to do it by their wit and by their brilliance. You and I can be very normal, not too bright. That's me. Just not too bright. And yet I have an unfair advantage over the most brilliant guy in the world because I can hear the voice of the Lord. And what he's trying to get, I've already got. Because every, everything in life is aimed at a better life, right? I lived the other way. I, I can tell you this is better. This is a lot better. I go down, I, I lay down and go to sleep. I start getting sleepy at 10 o'clock at night. Isn't that amazing? I remember when I was sleepy at 10 o'clock in the morning. Life changes. It gets good. I love you. God loves you. He's with you. Walk together. Hear his voice. Don't get nervous. 
Don't get upset. Don't throw your hammer through the wall. God's with you. He's with you. Hug somebody beside you. Tell them that you love them. 